by the way. Good morning, happy Sunday. So we're gonna sit here and do the, uh, do the intro, say hi to everybody on their way as we start to gather, and then we'll, we'll get on with the things. So we have company <laughs> talking to yourself. How's it going, Craig? You're talking to me now. Um, so up here at the Hobbit House, uh, a couple things to, to, to get out of the way, business off the top here. First, uh, I'll tell you, I, was, I know we've had trouble streaming up here before, and um, wait a minute, am I? I'm on the right channel, aren't I? Yeah, I am. Okay. Hey, Seamus, how's it going, man? Um, so I, I thought I would try um, the T-Mobile mobile t-mobile home internet or something as an alternative to the starlink and so i've tried it i got the thing i brought it up here and it wasn't good enough <laughs> it wasn't good enough it, it was it was close to the same as um as the starlink but not good enough uh to justify replacing starlink so we're going back with the regular old starlink so we'll see if i uh can get cut off um so that's one thing. So uh, it was a test. We tested the T-Mobile home internet and it failed. <laughs> or it didn't fail, but it certainly didn't pass uh, strong enough to justify switching. So that's one thing. The second thing, I'll just let you know, we have company up here today. So uh, I'm in the bedroom right now and uh, I'll walk through the house here in a minute. So there's going to be people and there's going to be some noise and, uh, and I'm going to keep the stream down to an hour probably, okay? Um, and then the, the next order of business here, I'm going to do this a lot. I'm going to switch this camera. How's it going? Hot wheels. C sharp. Howdy. Hey man, glad you're here. All right. So let's do this thing now because it's part of the deal. Oh, there's my dirty clothes. Oh gosh. Don't Janice will be so upset. Anyways, PCB way. They are my sponsor. You guys all know this. They treat me well and uh, I appreciate whatever, services you uh need that you send their way as well so thanks again pcb way as always 3d printing custom pcbs cnc routing and on and on and on right thank you sir good enough how's it going all right so we got that part out of the way now um so the topic that i chose for today is my diy water heater up here so a little bit of background just for a minute we are off the grid. We have solar batteries and then a generator for backup. Um, we made so, plenty of mistakes building this place. And probably one of the biggest was we did not provide for an exhaust for a propane water heater. So we had to have an electric water heater. I... And, and we did it really fast. So we just basically got whatever generic electric hot water heater the guy could get, the plumber, and that's what we've kept. I think I will switch to a, high, uh, what's it called, a heat pump water heater, which will be more efficient. It should use about a quarter of the power that the current one uses. But for now, we're still stuck with this really high current water heater. Okay, your typical electric water heater draws about 4,000 watts. Um, so I, I know, I know I've talked about it before where I have, uh, shown you how I turn it on and off, uh, remotely. We'll do that. But the other thing that I've added is temperature sensors. So I'm, I can now tell how warm the water is. And, um, th the last part of this then is to make automation in home assistant to say when the water temperature is this or whatever, uh, and, people are home and solar is working, maybe there's a couple other things we wanna consider in there, then turn the water heater on. So we're gonna go through, I'll go down to the basement now. We will go through what I've done for the smart water heater or how to make a dumb water heater smart. I think Hookup Rob did a video about this a while back too. And actually some of what I'm doing, I got from him because he does things the right way and I do things you know, the, the wonky way. <laughs> uh, and then we'll come back up, we'll get on the computer and we'll do the um, automation in Home Assistant, okay? Sound good? So, hi everybody, thanks for being here. Sorry for uh, the kind of rockiness here, but we're gonna do the best we can. Where is my neck thing? Oh, I know where it is, hold on, all right. 
here we go. So we're gonna go out here, secret door. Oh, wait, we're gonna go do this now. Secret door. To the bedroom, right? Okay, now there's people out there. Oh, where did my neck thing go? Did I leave it downstairs? I can't have my, I can't be holding this on my, in my hand, I'm gonna need my hands. Huh, okay, well, I'll find it. I'll find it in a minute here. Okay. Nobody. Oh, why is the floor wet? I just stepped in something wet. Soda. Why is there soda on the floor? Dang, I lost my neck thing. Where's my neck thing? Hold on. Okay. I gotta find my neck thing. I just had it in my second ago. So what are we gonna do to clean up the soda, kids? Get napkins. Yeah. Thank you. Ugh. can't find my, got to find my neck holder. Hold on. What did I just do? Janice, I just had my thing that holds my phone on my neck. Where'd it go? I just had it. Oh, found it. Yep, right where I started. Okay, here we go. Now, let's try that again. Sorry, everybody, for the delay. Here we go. <laughs> you like my shirt? Thanks. Excuse me. Now you're in check. I hope it was diet soda so it doesn't make it sticky. Oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. More mead. Okay, so here we go. So here is what we got. This is, oh, I wonder if I can, will this let me do the different lenses on the phone? I doubt it, that's too bad. I would like to use the different lens, but it doesn't look like YouTube's gonna let me switch. If I could do the wide angle lens, that would be wonderful. Okay, so let's talk about what we got here. This is the big, ugly hot water heater. It's nice, it does its job. This is actually the geothermal, uh, pump tank that's the pump this is the tank so what i've got smarts wise right now is this dangling in the breeze because i need a box for it this is one of those esp32 poe boards from tt go and i've got it connected to three dallas temperature sensors and then i've got one temperature sensor at the lower end of this tank one temperature sensor at the high end of this tank and then i actually have a temperature sensor uh, at the low end of this tank on the um, on the output. Is that the output? Load out. So this is where the water goes from the pump into this tank down there. So let me just show you how I put this in here because it's really not that big a deal. Now, every water heater is probably going to be a little different. This is just how this one works. So here is the wire. And this little foam piece just kind of sticks in there to keep it all insulated. And then I just took this end of the probe and just tucked it back in there. And if you stuck your finger back in there, this is probably some sort of high voltage thing, so be a little careful. But if you stuck your finger back in there, you can feel the side of the tank, and it's hot. I can tell it's hot. So I just took this thing and just set it back in there so that it was touching that tank try to get it to sort of stay put and then just stick this foam back in there and that's it simple as that just stick that wire in there with that little probe on the end and make it stay like that and then put this cover back on and then i just did the same thing down there no big deal right and 
we'll go through here's the the plan is we'll go through this mechanical part here and i'll show you and then we'll go sit down at the computer and i'll show you like the esp home sketch and uh and we'll go through the automation we'll, we'll create an automation for it because right now i've got an automation that's just pretty simple just you know turn on the water heater in the daytime because you really don't want to run the water heater at night if you can help it because uh you're not making any power on the solar at night so let's see find that little uh, of course finding this screw hole there it is and then i guess i'll take a minute let's take a minute and look at this one again so this is a very important piece of this process. In here is the big contactor. This is what actually lets me turn on and turn off the water heater. Okay, so we went through this before, we'll go through it again to make this complete. Okay, so here's what we got in here. We have a Shelly. Now this actually I think is a different Shelly than I had originally in here. This one's the, I think this is a, is this a Shelly 2? Yeah, I think this is a 2. Uh, 2.5, yeah. So this is a Shelly 2, which means there's two relays in there. This really is just functioning. This is not what is actually uh, seeing the current for this water heater. It is uh, just controlling the coil for this big contactor so this is the big contactor this thing's rated for like 50 amps where this is only like 16 or something so this is rated for 50 amps it's two phase so we got both phases here 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 and let the water heater thermostats turn on and off whenever the temperature in the upper and lower parts of the tank is below their threshold but i don't want that because i don't want the water heater to come on like in the night or you know, just every time that somebody uses a little bit of hot water, I want it to only come on when I've got plenty of electricity being made by the solar panels. So to control when the hot water heater comes on and off, this is the only way to do it. And there's no other brains in here. There's nothing that thinks in here. There's like a very mechanical thermostat up here and down there. And then these very simple um, heating coils or heating elements in there, not coils, but heating elements. And that's it. So here we've got power coming in from over here, two phases going to this side here so it's 240 volts and then coming out here and going down to the water heater in that hole right there okay uh then and all i did was this was already kind of spliced together i just said i just took the wires from here and there and cut them and put them on this relay here or this uh, contactor here and then the contactor has a secondary coil over here. That's these two wires back there. And those are what tells the contactor to open and close. So when those two are connected through the Shelly, then it closes the coil and the water heater turns on. When I want them to be open uh, or want the water heater off, I tell the Shelly to open your contacts. The Shelly opens the contacts, separates those two wires uh, internally here, and this contactor disconnects and we don't have any more power going to the water heater. So it's beautiful, right? Um, something I was gonna tell you about that. Oh yeah. So one important thing about well, why did you do it this way? Why did I have? Why do I have a Shelly here when I actually have this device, this ESP Home device? Oh no, don't don't mess up my orientation. This ESP Home device down here, the ESP32 with the temperature sensors. I sh I certainly could run a relay, and have a relay in here that is run by this instead of having the Shelly. Why would I do that? is labeled A1 and A2, which are controlled by the Shelly. Excellent. Thank you, Samer. Uh, so when, so the reason, the, here's a couple of reasons. One reason is I did this first before I had the temperature sensor in this in here. And since it's working, I don't want to mess with it. <laughs> okay. So if it ain't broke, don't mess with it. That's, that's the reason number one. Reason number two is that um, the Shelly actually gives me a backup because this Shelly does not have... Uh, any different firmware on it. So it's running on the Shelly app. So I can control it remotely, whether I'm here or someplace else. And if Home Assistant is down, uh, I can still run the Shelly. So I can always look and see, um, 
Too bad the Shelly won't take the Dallas sensors. Yeah, that's true. And that's because Shelly doesn't run on anything low voltage, right? It's all like 120. Both using internet and MQTT. This is not using MQTT. This is using the, um, the actually neither one of them is using MTTT, MQTT. This one is the Shelly integration in Home Assistant. So it's running the native Shelly app. I guess maybe it does you as, maybe that's how it connects. I can't remember if it connects with MQTT. It probably does. I don't know if it's, if it's REST API or whatever, or if it's the MQTT. Anyways, so this is the Shelly. No, the Shelly one can work on 12 to 36 volts. Okay. The one plus also. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I don't, you can't put a temperature sensor on one of these because these aux, well, I don't know. Anyways. Yeah. The point is, um, this works on the app and this runs ESP home. So I don't know that either one of them is using MQTT, but all right, so let's put this back on here. Let's put this back on here. And this is just a Home Depot box that was, I don't know, 12, 12 bucks or something. Not that much. The OnePlus and it has internet and MQTT. Sonoff TH can take the DS sensor directly. That's true, it could. Relay coil needs to be the line mains. Yeah. I'm late to the stream. It looks like we're out at the Hobbit house. We are. Hoobit, hoobit. Tankless, more efficient, problems fails. So tankless, I'm not sure tankless is more efficient. Um, may, I mean, maybe it uses less power. What we're going to do eventually is this is going to be replaced with one that has a heat pump up top. So with the heat pump up top, um, it will use a lot less power. It'll probably make this room really cold, which is a good thing too, I guess. Because, But it'll use less power to heat up the water. Um, and then that little board there, like I said, that's a, that's a POE. So it just goes to my POE switch over here and that's it. Uh, so I don't need any other wires to it or anything else. And just runs those three temperature sensors. All right. Okay. So now let's go back upstairs. You want, do you want to see everybody in the house again? Let's go, let's go back upstairs and we'll sit at the computer for a minute. <laughs> you guys don't have to be quiet. Out for lunch. <laughs> okay. Kids are doing something fun. Yeah. Smells good. Cooking lunch up here. Party at the Hobbit house. All right. The Z's, Z's and friends, Z's and friends. Okay, now we're gonna go back to this. So now the rest of the stream is gonna be me pointing the phone at the laptop. How about that for ridiculous? Pass the grog, hold on a second. I gotta kick some things out of the way here. All right, now. Second short PCB plug there. Okay, here we go. Now, we're gonna go to Home Assistant. Okay, first thing we'll do, what is that ethernet board? Great question. Let's check it out. It is the TTGO um, ESP32POE. Uh -huh. I've seen it a million times. Let's see if I can do it like this so I can actually see the screen. So this is it, and they're pretty cheap. I mean, 17 bucks is not too bad um, for what it can do. I, I don't use a lot of this stuff, like the SD card I don't use. You don't, it doesn't have the UART chip to be able to do uh, serial connection, USB connection programming. So you actually have to have the separate little programming board, which is, I don't know what that one, uh, this, no, I don't know what this is. I don't know why it doesn't show the P, the programming board, but anyways, it's got a little programming board on it uh, that you have to buy separately. It's like two dollars, but you need it. You need it to be able to. That's this thing here. You need this to be able to program it. So, 
But programming, it's actually not that hard once you have that. It just uh, flashes just like anything else. You can just use ESP Home Flasher. Do I know of any good Zigbee touch wall switches that are also Zigbee routers? I don't, but maybe somebody else in the chat does. Okay, so we're going to go back to this for a minute. And let's go to, first let's go to the uh, ESP Home sketches. So let's go to ESP Home and heat, water heat temperature here it is there's an update available we're not going to update it let's go into the edit and let's go see what it looks like here so when you're using that that board that tt go board this is what your sketch looks like i know it's going to be impossible to read but um you have an esp home section up here that has a name and then the platform is just esp32 and then the board is esp32 dash poe this is the most important part right here this is how it's going to work with Ethernet and with the power. So those are the pins, numbers, and such, which I can't believe. Is this the one? You know what, Marshmallow? The T-Mobile the hotspot was not good enough, unfortunately. So we are back on the Starlink. Because I tried to do it and in, from the basement, and it just it wasn't doing it. We could do a little. We'll do a, um, we'll do a test before we're done. Thank you very much, sir. Good enough. Uh, we'll do a test. We'll do a speed test before we're done. And I'll show you. So then uh, when you do one of these Dallas temperature sensors, the way, oh, I forgot to show you that. What you have to do is a couple things. Hardware wise, you have to connect, you have to put a resistor, a 4.7 ohm resistor. We talked about this on a stream before or something else uh, the, in the vicinity of that. I think we decided anything between one and 10,000 would be okay. So it's 4.7 thousand ohm, whatever. Uh, get closer. Sorry. Get closer. Get closer. Yeah. When uh, when you do this, you have to have a resistor between the positive and the data. All right. And then what I didn't show you down there is that all of these are on one GPIO pin. So this is all of them are on this one GPIO pin 33. That's it. And um, when you first connect it, when you first connect the temperature sensors, you don't have this section in there you just do this uh and then when you when you do that then in the logs of this it tells you the address for each of the sensors okay so then what i did i wish i could show you this but what i did to determine which sensor was which was i had like something really cold something out of the freezer and i would put i would have all three of the temperature sensors let's go to the logs of this or let's go to the this is the web interface for this um, device. So I would go here and I would uh, see which one of them was cold, right? So when I looked at which one of them was cold, I would put a label on it and say, okay, I'm gonna call this one the upper water heater tank and then find out which is the next coldest one. Okay, that's gonna be this lower temperature one because I put this one in the ice and it got cold. So what you can see right here is that my geothermal tank right now is at 20C, which doesn't matter because it's not really doing anything. It may be putting that water through the floors, which is in which is like 60 something degrees. And there it just came up with the state temperature information. Uh, and then you can see that the upper part of the water tank is hot, but the lower part is not. So I turned it off because I want the batteries to charge up while there's a lot of sun. Uh, and then once the batteries are full, I'll turn it back on again. But we're going to set up an automation to look at these things and, and determine, um, you know, what, uh, when we want it to turn on and turn off. But in these logs over here is where you would see the Dallas temperature sensor address when you first turn it on. So when you first go to this, when you first fire it up without this sensor section, it will give you these addresses. And then once you put in those addresses uh, in this here, then that's when you, in the sketch here, then that's when you'll get the value for that. So let's see. Building a 20 sensor Dallas device with a Raspberry Pi, holy cow. Need to pull up the data to five volts with a 1K to keep them running. Oh really, so if you, if you use a bigger one, a bigger resistor, it won't work because there's so many of them. All right. So there's that. So now we know, and, and if we go here to, um, we go here to the states page in Home Assistant, we can do tank. If I just search for tank, uh, I can see this is now in Fahrenheit, but the geothermal tank 
is 68 degrees. The lower water tank temperature is 83. This is Fahrenheit again. And the upper water tank is 115. All right. So we're going to do, let's see, I made some notes. Let me switch back to this for a minute. Ask, ask me your questions right now while I switch here to something else for a second. Any questions? Questions, concerns, chistes, chismes. That's Spanish. Anybody who speaks Spanish knows what, knows what that means? All right, we're going to open up my notes. But I got to do that a little privately, you know. You don't want to see my notes. All right. We'll go back to this for a second now. These are, this, these are the talking points. Hello, Vanessa. These are the talking points I had. How do I make this bigger? Can I make this bigger? I don't think I can. I need to get closer because you're so able to use it. Oh, 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 we'll go back, back. So because you're able to use the Shelly 2.5 on a water heater, I guess that means I could use one for a light and a fan switch in the bathroom. Yes, Nicholas, you absolutely can. The, the light and the fan are going to take like no power at all. Now, important to note, the Shelly is not handling the full current of the water heater. The, the Shelly is only activating the contactor, the big high current contactor. It's just the activation. It's just pretending to be a little switch on the logic side. So it's very low current. Uh, it's not switching the big load directly. That's that coil piece is doing that. Any concerns about Legionnaire's, Legionnaire's disease? Uh, why? With, because of having like, I mean, I don't know. Tell me why. Why, Acid? Because I think of that as like swamp coolers or something. Maybe not. Aren't those tank temps conductive to Legionnaire's disease? Oh, that's what you guys just said. I don't know. For your neck, maybe that, maybe I don't know. Maybe there's something I don't know. So if I leave my tank temperatures too low, then it grows Legionnaires. Is that what happens? I didn't know this. For your next, have a larger tank, store more heat overnight, run longer more often. Yeah. I'm going to do the, the um, it's all going to become much less relevant if I switch it out for a, uh, what do you call it? Um, hybrid uh, heat pump water heater. So now you guys got me worried about this Legionnaires thing. So if I don't have my water temperature hot enough, then I'm going to get a disease. That's, that sucks. <laughs> All right, let's see what else did we talk about here. So we talked about the high current contactor. We talked about the Shelly relay. We talked about the temperature sensors. We looked at the ESP32 PoE. Uh, I could have the relay on the 32, as I said. Below 120F, Legionnaires can grow. Bathroom electric heater. Ooh. How, how much current, Nicholas? So C sharp worm, if it's, does it matter if it's exposed? I mean, cause what about like a hot tub? A hot tub's not 120 degrees. Well, is, and, but does it be, we have, because we have uh, chlorine in the hot tub that we don't grow that, is that why? I could have a relay there. Yep, we looked at the SP home sketch. Okay, now we're gonna go into the, the automation stuff. 140, good gravy. So I didn't have a concern about Legionnaire's disease until now. Thanks, guys. Jeez. <laughs> All right, let me go back. Let me show you something that I've, that I've done here on my dashboard. So here on the dashboard, I have created a, an input Boolean. And that's all this is. It's a helper. Uh, if we go here and look at what it is. It is this input Boolean. And it just is house is occupied is what I called it, right? Geothermal and domestic hot water are sealed units. Water is not exposed to air. Uh, geothermal, domestic hot water, even the domestic hot water? I guess it's not exposed to air until it comes out, right? Got to keep the doc and his family safe. Geothermal, probably not even water. It's not water. You're totally right. It's, it's actually like a um, methanol, I want to say. It's like methanol and something else. Any recirculation to save on wasting water, waiting for it to get hot? Ooh, good question, Pat. But no, I haven't done that. I like that idea, though. I do like that idea. You know, I look, uh, sir, good enough. The difference, the glycol and the methanol. Uh, methanol is cheaper. And there was something else about it. Uh, it. It's cheaper, and we needed a lot for the geothermal system. 
And I think it had something to do with, I don't remember if it had something to do, there was another reason, I can't think of what it is, another reason why they use methanol in the geothermal system instead of the others. It also has to be a sustained length of time. I have my tank set to 140-ish and use a mixing valve to bring cold water temp down to 120 for the faucets. Oh, man. You guys are too smart for me. Uh, so anyways, I've set up this input Boolean, and when there's people in the house, I want the house to behave differently than when there are no people in the house, okay? So I'm using this um, as a way to uh, switch on and off automations that are that I only want active when people are in the house, all right? So that's what this occupied one is. So now let's start making this, let's make a, an automation for the water heater. And I already gave it some thought because I knew that I would be struggling to think of, uh, think about it when I have everybody live watching because that's what I do. All right, let's see. Circulation of summer, fireplace off when unoccupied, fireplace on when occupied. So this hasn't actually been working. When house is occupied, changes to on. Oh, then switch on the fireplace. Oh, we should change this one too. That should be different. Uh, generator for the hot tub, and then a bunch of hasp ones. See what else we got. Pavilion fan timer. Turn down the water heater at night. Big loads off. Okay. All right, good. So I don't have one yet for this, so we're going to start one. And I apologize again because of the uh, nature of my stream today. We do not have a blueprint for this, so we're going to start an empty automation. The trigger, um, and I put this in my notes, I want the trigger to be if the, if the high temperature is less than X. So basically, I want to do the same thing. I need to see if I can tell based on internet traffic whether someone is home. But if we are, got to think about it more. Mm-hmm. All right, so the trigger is going to include... Okay, it's back. Sheesh. Thank you, Elon. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, thank you, Starlink. Exactly. Cursed Elon. All right. Uh, water heater temp. Okay, that's what I want. So I've got a couple things here uh, that are water heater related, but this is the one I want, the water heater temperature. Okay, good. Uh, the trigger. When the upper water heater temperature changes, excellent. So we want it to get below, and let's look at what it is. So we're going to open up another, another browser here for uh, the, another browser here for uh, the. Oh, so this is actually the state, right? So it's giving it in Celsius. So let's let's use Celsius. That's fine. So let's say when the upper water heater tank temperature is below. I mean, I don't know what the right number here is, but let's say it's 40. And if it's below that for five minutes, just so it's not triggering on and off too fast. Um, I, could, I could have it do an and, like where it's both of them have to be low. Or do we want it to just be the top one? Because while the top one is still on, we're going to just do the top one for now. We'll just, we'll just leave it at that for the top. So we're only going to be basing it on the top, the upper one, which means there is still some hot water in there, enough hot water heater probably to do a little bit of dishes or, or you know, hand washing, maybe take a shower, one shower. Now let's add some conditions. Okay. So the conditions, first of all, we're going to make it a state, and we want this to be the occupied state. So is the house occupied state on all right, so if house is occupied is on. So this, this automation is going to stop right here if I turn off my input Boolean that says somebody's in the house, all right? And I manually have to do that. I do that when, when I know somebody's coming up here, then I can turn it on and it will start running some of these things. Okay, what is another condition that we need it to, to have? We also need it to have, I don't know, does the sun, let's look at the sun sensor for a second. It's going to fast cycle because the top heats fairly fast. Might want to monitor bottom. Okay, I like that. Um, the lower, let's say if the lower is below 40. Okay. 
the lower is below 40, and we'll do it again for, for five minutes. Uh, the water on. Um, oh, yeah, I wanted to look at the sun. I want to know if the sun thing is working here. I don't know. Let's look at the sun sensor for a second and see what it says. Uh, sunrise, sunrise, sun above horizon. So let's look at how long it's been in what state here, history. Below horizon, above horizon. Okay, so this is pretty easy. So the sun, I've got, I can just set this to when it's above the horizon. Sweet. Let's do that. We'll do that. So we got to know that it's above the horizon. There's going to be a lot of conditions here. And this is kind of an experiment in conditions. It might not need this, but, uh, oh, no. Condition. Uh, I guess we can do, hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. I guess instead of that, we can do, instead of sun condition, let's take this one out and let's do, let's do state again. We'll do a state, and this, the entity will be the sun, sun.sun, .sun, and then the state would be above the horizon, All right? So once this, the sun is above the horizon for, we'll say, 10 minutes, then it can come on, all right? Conditions, conditions have been amazing. Good. All right, so another thing. Let's see, what else did I have in my notes here? All right, so condition, if the house is occupied, uh, then the solar production and the battery voltage. So let's do the battery voltage next. Uh, da, 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 we'll do state again. Midnight... Midnight, my, my battery is this one. We're gonna use this one. Midnight battery voltage left. If it is, uh, wait a minute, I need it to be greater than. Hmm. So it's not a state, it needs to be a numeric state. I'm gonna get rid of this. Oh, this needs to be and, huh? Does it need to be and? Are these and? Hmm. So yeah, these need to be and. Oh shoot. And test if multiple conditions match. Hmm. I don't know what the and does. Tell me what the and does exactly. Conditions are and. Okay, good. All right. So I thought numeric state. That's what we need. There we go. Now we can do the midnight battery. Midnight solar voltage is left. Hey, Mongo Wongo, how you doing? Uh, so if the voltage is above, we're going to say 51 volts. It's got to be above 51 volts. Okay. Great, so that's that one. And then we want another numeric state that is, the uh, solar production. Mm, let's see, which one, we'll see which one is this. Go back here. This one, midnight battery energy left. That's the one we need, midnight battery energy. Hi. Midnight battery energy left. Okay, if that one is above, so I want to know if it's making enough power. And I want it to be above, boy, I would love it to be above 2,000, but it doesn't get there a lot. So let's make sure that it's above 1,000 that it's making a thousand watts of solar power. All right, so our conditions so far are, uh, is the house occupied? 
is the sun above the horizon, which is probably unnecessary with the um, solar power thing, but whatever. Is the sun above the horizon? Is the midnight solar voltage of the batteries above 51 volts? And is the solar making more than 1,000 watts? Great. Now, if all those things are true, then... We, let's see if we can do the device and we can do the water heater. And again, I know that sometimes my, my entity names are kind of messed up. If you just monitor the batteries, checking the solar production may just be complications. Yeah, try, probably true. Um, well, it'll drain the battery so fast that I want to make sure that it's not, you know, that we are making some solar when we do it too. All right, so switch... Hobbit Hot Water Channel 1. So, mm, okay, Hobbit Hot Water Channel 1. I think Hobbit Hot Water is the name of the entity. So if we go to the device and we go Hot Water, Hobbit Hot Water, uh, and we want to turn on the water for showers. So I somehow named that in there. Turn on the water for showers. Great. Um, sweet. Now, uh, okay, good. What do you guys think? New automation, let's see. Uh, hot water for guests. Turns on the water heater when the house is occupied and making solar power. Okay, great. So let's test it, shall we? Let's test it. If we run this, and then let's look at the traces, see what happens. Oh, it worked. Oh, did it work? I can't tell. Keep in mind, if you decide you want it to, no matter what is manual, this might shut it off on you. I guess if I turn, then I can turn off the occupied thing. Well, this shouldn't turn it off ever. This should only turn it on. All right, let's see. This node was not executed, so no further trace information is available. Hold on a second. Did it not work? Step detail, let's see. Oh, because it, uh, house is occupied. Sun is above the horizon. Battery, is the battery above 51 volts? Oh yeah, the water heater's on. So let's turn it off. So the water heater is off and then let's run it and see if it turns on again. Let's run it again. Uh, back here, run it. Yeah, it turned it on. Okay, great. Um, do I want to have, do, do we want to make it part of that same automation to turn it off? <laughs> uh, let's put it, Let's turn it off. Let's go into that automation and let's turn it off. Uh, let's see. Let's go in there and let's turn it off like it's sunset. Hot water for guests. Let's go down here and let's add an action. And can we do, is it like the wait? What's that like? Wait for trigger. Wait for trigger. Okay. Okay add trigger and let's do the state and we'll do the sun as the trigger and we want the oh sun dot sun wait why did it not show up there sun what the oh it doesn't need an entity hmm When something changes, so 
was it trying to do two of them? Oh, it was trying to get me to do a second. We don't care about it, so we don't need a second. When it changes to below the horizon. Okay, so now when the sun is below the horizon, I don't even want it to do a minute. If a storm comes, it will still be on and drain the battery. So, but if we put it, so we turn it off if the, we turn it off if what? If the solar production goes down. So instead of this, uh, we change it to, what if we change this? Um, so wait for a trigger. And we change this to a numeric state. Uh, and then we can do the midnight voltage. But though 10% of the max is maximum production, yeah. Uh, what was the, what's the name of the production one again? Oops. This one. Midnight battery energy. See, that's just like a midnight battery energy left. If it's below, say, 500. Okay. Um, for a period of time. Let's say if it's below 500 for 10 minutes. Then add the action. Uh, device, water, battery energy is less than, yeah. Uh, so then we want to turn off the hot, who bit hot water, turn off the water for the guests. Okay, how's that look, fellas? What do you think? Let's save it. And let's go through it all again. All right. If the lower part of the water heater tank temperature changes to below 40 C, then make sure that the house is occupied. Make sure the sun is above the horizon for 10 minutes. Does that mean it has to wait for 10 minutes? Let's just change this. Let's, let's change this. Let's edit this. I don't want the 10 minutes. It just makes sure that the sun is above the horizon, okay? So make sure that the sun is above the horizon all right. I love these collapsible things, by the way. This is so cool. This is so cool. Don't tell Blade, but this is really giving Node Red a run for its money these days. Confirm that midnight solar voltage is above 51. So if the battery gets below 51 volts, then I don't want the hot water heater to run until the battery has some time to charge up. Um, then confirm that the midnight battery energy left, and left is because of the, there's a right and a left, and the one that I'm monitoring more is the left. That it's not left over. It's the one that's to the left. Then as long as we're making a thousand watts, then go ahead and turn on the water heater. Then once the water heater is on, keep it on until the solar production drops below 500. I thought I had 10 minutes in there. I did. Oh, this is the timeout optional. Never mind. Okay, so the midnight left below 500, so the solar is producing less than 500 watts for 10 minutes. Then we go on to the turn off. Cool. All right, what do you guys think? Anything else? I think that's pretty good. I think that's pretty good. We'll, we'll let it run. We'll give it, uh, we'll give it a chance uh, to determine if it's something we want to keep doing or not. So we can turn it off for now. And then one more time, we'll just run it, and we'll see if it turns it back on, and it did. So great. Okay. And we're producing 4,500 watts, and we're using a lot too, but the battery is decently charged, so we'll let it be. Below 51 volts and above 500 watts, solar production might be, oops. What was that? Might be a short cycle opportunity. Uh, all right. Well, let's think about it. What's the trigger? It's not going to turn off when the volts get below 51. It'll only turn off when the water temperature gets low. I need to, by the way, add 
the water temperature to this. I do need to add water temperature to this. So where do we want to add water temperature here? Let's see. Should we... Speed test, by the way. Look at that. It's 100 megabits per second up, down, but only 2.6 up. But 2.6 up is actually better than it often is. Um, so where do we want to put the water temperatures? Let's just make... Oh, here's some temperatures. But I don't want that to be... I don't want the water temperatures to show up like that. I kind of want them to show up like this. So... Would you also want to turn it off once it reaches temperature for an amount of time? Not set to turn off for any water temperature. The water heater itself does that. There you go. True that. Okay. Thank you both, by the way, and everybody else that's contributed to uh, helping me sort through this. Let's add a card. We're going to add a gauge like this, and we're going to make it the water temperature tank. Oh, wait, hold on. We don't just want that. We want it to be a, st a stack. We want a horizontal stack. Horizontal stack? Yeah. That's what we want. Okay, and then in the first spot, we want this gauge. Oh, or do we want the special magic gauge? Uh, well, let's see. All right, let's do tank. The lower tank temperature. Okay, look at that. It's already getting pretty warm. Um, maximum. So, but this one doesn't have... Define severity. Yes. Excellent. All right, let's see. Um, mm -hmm. Minimum. Minimum's probably... It better never freeze. Let's set the minimum to like... 50 and then the maximum to I don't think it gets above 120 uh, maximum and then is there themes oh that's cool display a needle <laughs> uh, and then okay so the green would be up until what? Here's a thought. I used to control the top element and the bottom element in the water heater separate. Only powered the bottom when the power was cheap. Oh, do you you want me to try and separate the two? Ooh, I don't know if I can do that. Uh, let's see, this is to 60. And this is uh, to 90. And then this is... Oh, wait, let's see. Actually, red, yeah, we want red to be 100. 60, 90, 100. Uh, let's do, maybe, let's do 80. 60, 80. 60, 80, 100. Easy to do, really? Take it apart? Okay. So that's that one. And then we're going to do the next one. We'll do another gauge. And this one will also be the tank, which, by the way, I do want, I want to know what the geothermal tank temperature is, so we're going to put that in here as well. The upper water heater tank temperature. And what happens if we put these themes on? Yeah, nothing. All right, so minimum, what did I say, 60? And, oh, no, wait, sorry. That's different. This is 50. And this was, what, 130? And then we do want to define the severity. And we want red to be everything above 100. Yellow, anything above 80. And green, anything above, well, 50, because that's the low, right? Let's go back over here. Lower. OK, great. So those are the same. Sweet. And then we'll just add one more because I do want that geothermal one. So we'll add the geothermal gauge as well here. Oops, I passed it. All 
I don't know if I want to gauge on that one, though. <laughs> Geothermal is weird for that because it's different in the summer mode, winter mode. Yeah. What did I miss, eh, Barry? How's it going? You, you just missed me goofing around with some home assistant stuff up at the Hubert house. Uh, I could just simply display it. I don't need a button. What if we just, what if we just did the entity? And if we did um, geothermal tank temperature. Yeah, that's fine. And the name, the geotank, that'll do, that'll do. Okay, great. Save that, and I really want it, it's at the bottom of the bottom, okay, fine. Great, done, sweet. Now we've got, I know how much the water heater tank is. I would like it to be stuck over here all the time, but. Maybe I'll move that around. Anyway, great. Anything else? So what else did you guys, uh, we're getting too close to, we're getting close to the hour and I was gonna only stay on for an hour today. Um, I didn't get to talk about a, a couple of other things. Um, I didn't get to talk about, let's go back to my mug for a minute. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, we'll talk about other things another time. Any other questions, concerns, cheese days, cheese mace? that anybody wants to bring up um, before we go get the monkeys for sign off. That graph shows in F, the automation is in C. Good question, good question. Uh, that's a great question. I wonder if, I wonder where it's making the change. I wonder where it's making the change. I'll check it and see. I'll check it and see. Uh. Um, anybody on that needs, uh, well, let me just say this. My concern is the sun angle being the on trigger. It was a condition. You think, it, um, is there a way to force some elements to read C when most are in F? The measure, F measure of unit isn't working. I don't know, curmudgeon. That's a good question. I, I'm, I'm. I must have changed somewhere for it to display Fahrenheit. Maybe in the gauges you can just change it. Because the sensor, when I looked at the ESP Home data, right, you can force it in the main screen. Is there anything to turn off the heater when the water is up to temperature? The, just the water heater itself, Seamus, does that. The water heater itself will do its own function, and it will turn off the elements when it's on its own temperature. I didn't mess with the internal workings of that at all. When the sun is above the horizon, the solar isn't going to produce the max power right away. True. True. So, but that's another condition, right? So it has to also be producing a thousand watts. So it's another condition. Does that solve it? Does that does that do it? Uh, you can also use the minimal production of solar panels as a trigger instead of the sun angle. Yeah, the sun angle is probably not even necessary. My 3D printer sends in C, but Home Assistant displays F. You should be able to change that in the, yeah, you should be able to change it in the Home Assistant settings to tell it like what you want your global stuff to be, but I think you can also change it in the cards. So if you have a display card that is showing your temperature, you should be able to change that to the other units. Above 10% of max. Does anyone have issues with hive integration? Lost climate entity? No. Global needs to be F. I only want the printer in C. So you should be able to change that in the display. There you go. Sir Goodenough has a video. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. All right. Um, orders of business. Uh, this was all home assistant today. This is light season, as you all know. And, and I'm up to my eyeballs in in uh, light stuff uh, between dig quads and unos and pixels and permatrack and all that stuff. Um, so if somebody comes to me personally with questions, I'm really bad about answering because I do answer. 
So that's not what you were thinking, right? I'm really bad because I, I go ahead and answer um, and, and, and help. Uh, but I need to not do that right now because I am like up to my eyeballs. So if you come to me with questions, um, just know that I will be answering or, it, or, or referring you to public places to be answered because, and soon to be octas. That's right. We'll have the octas in the next couple of weeks. I think, I think the production of them is done. So now it's just a matter of, of, I guess they have to do some testing or something maybe, but then they box them up and they'll ship me a bunch. So I'll have some octas in the next couple of weeks as well. And I think I'm out of most of the other things right now, but only for temporary because within another two weeks, we'll have another shipment. Um, places to go for help. So good enough, just posted pixel heads. The pixel heads in discord are fantastic. I would say that is the number one place to go. Those guys are great. They're always there. They, they're just the right kind of guys and they're very helpful. Um, Facebook, the Facebook group is another one. There's also some very good, very knowledgeable, very active people there that don't use discord. So you can go back and forth wondering if 5,000 Watts of consumption would be enough to get the temp. Well, because I have the batteries, let's see, 500 watts of consumption would be enough to get the temp, to get to temperature. I have the battery, so like it can draw more than 500 watts. That's just saying I want at least, and I think I set the temperature, I think I set the cutoff to 1,000. So I want the cutoff for it to be able to use the water heater to, to be the solar is producing 1,000 watts, which right now it's producing like 4,000 watts. So it should be, should be okay. Uh, for all the DIY topics. Excellent. Thank you, Nicholas. True, true, true. We have such a great community in Discord. So Discord, Facebook, and then a new one that I want to start using that I have not been using myself, but a friend of mine says, why are you not doing this, is Reddit. There's also a, a WLED Reddit that has like 10,000 people in it that are all very willing to help. 500 was the cutoff to when it gets below 500 to turn it off. A thousand was the, was the condition to turn it on, I'm pretty sure. But I will check it, thank you guys. Thank you guys, you guys have better memories than I do. Okay, so those were the things. Um, I think that's it, anything else? I will be, uh, I should be home next weekend and able to stream normal times. Just curious why you didn't go tankless. Sorry for the late. So tankless, um, Tankless actually wasn't efficient because it would be on demand high current, even though maybe they're not quite as high current uh, individually as the big water heater. They can get high and they don't um, store any of the water. And for me, it's better to, with being off the grid, it's better to use the power when I've got it, heat the water and store it. Because if somebody turns on, to, you know, to wash their hands in the middle of the night or somebody takes a shower in the middle of the night, if it's tankless, it's just going to draw that power right then. I can't control when the water gets used and uh, that can be a problem. So when I was doing all the research, a lot of people said, this is for Brian, a lot of people said that tankless in an off the grid situation isn't as good. So maybe if you have other information, I'm happy to consider it or listen to it. What is the max power usage or normal power usage for the heater? 4,000 watts. You can also set that as the minimum production. Yeah, I could, but that would I would not get it done enough. Because the water heater doesn't need to be on very long. So the water heater can come on and drain the batteries. That's fine. As long as there's going to be production over the next couple of hours to um, recharge them. Helpful on Reddit. I'm amazed. Usually it's a site's full of bad answers. Yeah, I, 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 that's part of why I haven't been using Reddit. Because I, I, I got kind of tired of all the snarkiness. But... There is a WLED Reddit, so if Reddit is your thing, you can go there, and I will make that a part of my normal rounds when I'm going to answer questions. I'll go to Reddit now, too. Just to that channel. I'm not going anywhere else. The Home Assistant one, I, don't, I didn't think was, was as good. Maybe it wasn't Home Assistant. Maybe it was other things. Anyways, geothermal should be able to preheat the water heater. Um, yeah, mine can't, John, because my geothermal also cools for the floors. So it would be only able to heat the water heater water in the in the winter i need a bigger tank heat capacity is a real thing for sure hey Nenad. okay tankless off the grid would be okay if it was propane true that but i don't have that either all right i hate reddit too snooty yeah snarky was my was what i thought okay so 
we got a bunch of kids up here and the bunch of kids are going to want to um, see themselves and do sign off. So you guys ready for that? Let's go do it. Ready, Dawson? Yes. Dawson's ready. Really you like my shirt? Oh, yeah. I love That's my shirt. Cute. My Hawaiian shirt. Okay, here we go. All right. These kids want to do some sign off, right? Everybody wants to yell at my... Everybody wants to be on the sign off? Yeah. Should we do it from out go in front of the house? Everybody we're go tell the kids. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, it's live. They're saying everybody's going to say bye. You don't have to. It's okay. But if you want to, you can. The kids really wanted to. Yeah? Oh, you guys. Oh, look at that. You know where to find the tools. Okay. No one has shoes on. Nobody has shoes on. It's their choice. Okay. You don't have to. The kids wanted to. If you want to, you can. If you don't want to, you don't have to. Come on, come on. Come I'll make on. you famous. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Is then everybody see? Can everybody be seen? Everybody in it? Okay. All you have to say is bye if you want to. Right. Are you ready, girls? Yes. Okay. As, As always, thanks for watching. Until next time. Adios. No, it's I know. Very good.